Hi there and welcome to your review of Don Quixote and Miguel de Cervantes. I'm not going to get too much into depth about the story and that sort of thing, just because your lessons don't, I don't want to kind of bog you down and confuse you too much. Starting out, Don Quixote is a satire. It's meant to be satirical and kind of a critique and commentary on the time it was written. Uh, it mocks a lot of the traditional knightly values that had been important, particularly kind of during the Dark Ages. Remember that Don Quixote is written right on the cusp of the Renaissance period. Uh, we have, he's a contemporary actually of Shakespeare. So keep that in mind while you're reading his chapters. I've got these little quotes uh, on the top here, and these are kind of universal themes and commentaries that you'll see in Quixote's work, or excuse me, in Cervantes' work. Uh, he says, from reading too much and sleeping too little, his brain dried up on him and he lost his judgment. This is commentary on Don Quixote. Uh, reading and insanity come up a lot in Don Quixote, so something to be aware of. Um, at one point in time, Miguel de Cervantes says, our greatest foes and whom we must chiefly combat are within. So this is further commentary on the insanity theme that definitely comes up quite a bit in the story. Uh, and Don Quixote is actually kind of a nickname for the main character who's gone mad from reading too much. Uh, and this reflects a lot of the cultural beliefs about reading and education, particularly for women and low-born people. Uh, remember, Miguel de Cervantes was not super high-born. I mean, he was a noble, uh, so he was definitely higher up than a lot of the peasantry. But it's not like he was a very important person in Spanish society. Uh, love and war are the same thing, and stratagems and policy are as allowable in the one as in the other. Uh, this plays into Don Quixote's love for this woman. Uh, and this is why he goes out on these chivalrous quests, is to win the love of a woman and become an honorable knight. And he takes along his neighbor, Sancho Panza, uh, as his squire. Um, Sancho Panza is kind of supposed to be this, the logic and, and the reasoning. And Don Quixote really doesn't want to have anything to do with that. While you're reading chapter eight, which is in the lesson, uh, you'll kind of see that uh, Sancho Panza is just trying to convince Don Quixote, you know, these aren't, these are windmills, they're not giants, and Don Quixote is like, no, they are, let's get them. So uh, there is this element of, of kind of crazy happening. Too much sanity may be madness, and the maddest of all, to see life as it is and not as it should be. Uh, so this book starts in a moment of crisis, which is kind of departing from tradition. Traditionally, stories would start at the very beginning of your life and go till you died. And so what Miguel de Cervantes has done here is start at the moment of crisis when Don Quixote uh, is starting off on his journey. Um, so this is a, a break of traditional writing, and it's kind of one of the first times that, that books are ever written this way, and it's incredibly popular, and now that's how most books are written, is kind of in the height of crisis or, or leading up to crisis. In order to obtain the impossible, one must attempt the absurd. And this definitely is a representative quote of what's going on in the story of Don Quixote, um, because he is trying to attain the impossible, you know, this love of this beautiful woman. In order to do so, he, he does a lot of absurd things, like attacking friars and claiming that they're magicians. There are a lot of themes that are present in the story. Uh, tradition versus change is probably the most obvious one, just because we have all of this questioning of uh, knighthood and chivalry and reading and... and what it means to be a good chivalrous knight. Reality versus fantasy is another big obvious one just because Don Quixote is kind of off in La La Land for most of this story, but he comes back and back and forth with it I feel like is he has moments of clarity and moments of sanity and then other moments where he decides to attack randomly. Um, and finally, finally the quality of chivalry. Uh, we have Don Quixote trying to become this knight and do all these chivalrous acts and save damsels uh, and defeat giants. Um, but is that really necessary for modern society? And this is where the s satire and the critique of, of modern culture um, 
well, modern for his time period comes in is that he's critiquing, you know, we have this idea of chivalrous knights and noblemen, but is that a reality? Is that realistic anymore? And I think he does portray that properly when he's talking about, you know, attacking strangers on the road because they're villainous. Uh, and finally, forewarned, forearmed, to be prepared is half the victory. And this is really plays into kind of the final concepts of Don Quixote, um, because in his mind, he is forewarned and forearmed of all the troubles that will he'll meet on the road. Uh, the story starts out somewhere in La Mancha, uh, in a place whose name I do not care to remember. A gentleman lived not long ago, one of those who has a lance and an ancient shield on a shelf and keeps a skinny nag and a greyhound for racing. Uh, this is almost always voted in the top 100 best opening lines of literature ever written, which is very powerful and, and kind of exciting. Um, and again, it's starting kind of in the middle of what's going on with Don Quixote and why he goes on these quests. Uh, if you have any questions about this story or the lessons that accompany it, let me know. But otherwise, I will see you in class.